Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the CTA of the aorta. Um, this is also sometimes called a, a, a dissection study. Um, it's basically an evaluation, uh, an angiographic, you know, CT angiogram of the aorta to get a sense of any a, um, acute pathology. Um, I'm going to leave aside kind of the uh, kind of pr the, a, the sort of similar exam that's done for surgical planning um, and other sort of inter, you know interventions um, that are done. Uh, you know, for uh, endovascular interventions. So that's kind of a separate topic. Um, I'm going to, you know, talk about the use of the sort of study in the acute setting more so. Um, this sort of study frequently includes a non-contrast uh, phase through the chest to look for intramural hematoma, and then it can span the chest, chest and abdomen, um, or the chest, abdomen, and pelvis uh, frequently to the aortic bifurcation uh, to assess for acute aortic pathology, frequently dissection. Um, overall, the approach that we'll take is to, you know, as with all studies, get a sense of what's going on with the patient, take a look at priors, and then we'll, we'll go through and see if there's any limitations, um, look at the scout localizer, and then we'll go through, look at the non-contrast, and then follow the aorta, looking at branch vessels, including coronaries, uh, major, major aortic uh, arch vessels, mesenteric, renal, uh, you know, et cetera, in the ab you know, abdomen and pelvis. And then we'll look at other vascular structures, such as the pulmonary vasculature, which may impart uh, fill with contrast. And then um, I'll, I'll leave evaluation of the non-vascular um, structures to other videos where we talk about evaluating the chest, abdomen, and pelvis separately. Um, and, but that's kind of like the last part. First, we do all the kind of vascular structures that are better seen with the you know, CTA. And then, and then you'll go through the usual pattern you have, uh, such as for other non-angiographic studies. All right. So Let's get started. Um, what I've got here is in, you know, I've pulled the non-contrast uh, images in of the chest into an NPR viewer. Same with the um, angiographic images of the chest, abdomen, pelvis. All right, so one of the first things you want to get a sense of, you know, on both of these, but in particular the contrast, uh, post-contrast images, is the degree of cardiac and respiratory motion. Um, this, you know, these sorts of studies are frequently gated or they're they're timed so that the um, to minimize motion of uh, you know of the heart and surrounding lungs if the uh, you know if there's a significant motion that can kind of limit your ability to look for subtle acute pathology um, and to look at smaller vessels all right and you also want to get a sense as to what you know what is the contrast bolus timing is it adequate does it fill the lumen um, sufficiently to uh, allow you to detect any sort of uh, filling defects, any um, dissection, anything like that. So going through, you know, once you get a good sense of that, then, you, then what I like to do is I start with the non-contrast um, images and I look just carefully, you know, from the root of the aorta along its entire course throughout the chest. Um, and what you're really looking for is a uh, you know, if concerned for an intramural hematoma, the hyperdense crescent um, at the wall. Um, you know, you can also look, you can also see sometimes displacement of intimal calcification. Um, if the patient has, you know, cal you know calcific atherosclerotic disease, um, that can be seen both with dissection and intramural hematoma, anything that's going to kind of push that intima um, centrally. Um, the, then, you know, once you've gone through and just look at the aorta here, you can kind of go through and do a quick look through the chest um, as you would any sort of non-contrast chest. The, the major idea here um, is that we'll ultimately do this, do a full evaluation on the post-contrast images. You want to get a sense, you know, if any sort of differing anatomy is, is imaged, particularly at the upper part of this exam, um, compared to the post-contrast images, you know, that can kind of reveal additional abnormality in rare, you know, rare or uncommon circumstances. And then you're going to ultimately, as you see things on the post-contrast images, you have some availability to use these, um, 
non-contrast images to evaluate, you know, to characterize the degree of enhancement um, and see what's going on. For example, you know, if you saw an adrenal nodule here, for example, or if you wanted to get uh, the attenuation of the non unenhanced liver parenchyma, things like that. Um, those could be potential uses for a non-contrast uh, phase. All right. So once you've gone through and at least you know looked, m most importantly for intramural hematoma, um, you'll, you'll kind of go and then we'll take a look at the you know post-contrast or angiographic um, kind of images here. Uh, I like to start with. Um, going through and just getting a sense as to the overall morphology of the aorta, looking at the branching pattern as a conventional, you know, uh, you know three vessel arch. Uh, is there an anatomic variant? You want to get, get a sense as to if there's overall um, aneurysmal dilatation, if there is atherosclerotic pack, ulcerated plaques, penetrating ulcers, um, that sort of thing. Is, you know, is any penetration, you know, penetrating ulcer past the intima, um, uh, you know, uh, or is, is you know, is, is, is there extension past the intima to distinguish between an ulcerated plaque or a penetrating ulcer? Um, those sorts of things, all right? Um, and then, you know, going through the whole of the aorta, you want to look for any sort of, you know, linear filling defects that m would make you think of dissection. You want to look for, um, you know, contour abnormality that's going to make you think of um, a pseudoaneurysm, and you can do this on multiple planes. I like particularly like to use a combination of the axials and the coronals, um, zooming as, as needed. Um, so these can kind of give you a sense as to those contour abnormalities, any aneurysmal dilatation. You want to do this, um, and I'll do this all the way from the, you know, the root throughout the entire course of the aorta um, through the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. You know, another key thing to, to think about as you look at the aorta itself is whether there's wall thickening, you know, or whether there's any sort of, you know, you can pick out any abnormal enhancement of the wall or stranding, uh, soft tissue thickening surrounding the aorta. And then you'll think about the same sort of thing when we look at the branch vessels. You know, this can give you a sense as to whether there's any sort of vasculitis or other vasculopathy going on. Um, we're looking surrounding the vascular structures for fluid, for collections, for stranding, for any sort of inflammatory change as well. If you do find a dissection, you do find um, any sort of, uh, you know, uh, acute pathology, you want to get a sense as to involvement in branches and whether it's kind of like a type A or type B, whether it's, you know, more proximal or more distal, um, you know, relative to the aortic isthmus. Um, in terms of you know, once you look at just the aorta, I like to kind of use that as like kind of a first step to then ultimately, uh, or to or to the next look at branch vessels. So, I usually like to start at the root and look at the coronaries first, and just I'll, because these these studies are good, you're going to get a fair sense of the coronaries. You want to look at their origins. You know, in rare cases, you'll see anomalous origins, and you want to get a sense as to whether it's like one of these malignant origins. Um, you can get a sense as to the overall extent of, you know, coronary calcification. And there's going to be rare instances where you see things like, you know, pseudoaneurysms or, or things like that. And, and in some cases, you may actually see high-grade stenoses. You may see occlusion, whether these are, are chronic, you know. So um, you want to just remember that you are going to see the coronaries there, and that's kind of a good place to stop and take a look. Um, I'll go through and look at all of the branch vessels, you know, um, the innominate or brachycephalic, and then the you know, uh, common carotid, the left subclavian. And in each of these, you're following up through those branches throughout, through the um, to the extent you you will sometimes see uh, abnormality um, either extending from the arch into these vessels or abnormalities, um, whether that dissection, whether you know pseudoaneurysms aneurysms or high grade stenosis just primarily of these branch vessels and you want to follow the subclavians out to the edge of the study and this can be you know can be useful to do this on multiple planes um, to, especially to you know to problem solve any any anything you're seeing okay so you want to follow those all the way out as far as you can uh, and so that's just you know that's just the arch and then as we go down you're going to fall you're we're following the aorta and, and you want to take a look at I like to do the mesenteric arteries separate from renal, so we'll take a look at the celiac axis and follow, you know, uh, fo follow that out here along its branches as far out. It can be useful to kind of use um, either MIPS that we've got that you can either create um, if your PAX allows you to do that dynamically, or sometimes um, you know uh, they will be created for you and then sent sent to your PAX. Um, so that can be a useful thing to do as well. Um, 
So I'll, t you know, following out each of those branches of the celiac axis as, as best as you can. And similar for the SMA, you know, down into the, you know, all those small branches and then finding the IMA as it comes off um, and making sure that those origins are patent, that there's no high grade stenosis, that there's, you know, any sort of abnormality not extending into those. There's not primary abnormality of those branch vessels as far as you can see. Um, we're going to actually, you know, I like to do those both again, both on the, um, uh, at least, you know, coronals and then uh, you know, the axials and then coronals and then particularly for um, the the celiac axis and the SMA, um, these are well demonstrated on the sagittals. So especially if there's extrinsic compression or anything that can be well seen on, um, you know, uh, you know, sag sagittals and we can kind of, and then as need, you can MIP or use thicker slices um, to get a sense as to that. As we go down um, at the end, you know, at, you know, at the lower aspect here, you're going to see the bifurcation. Um, and then you can follow those iliac vessels, the commons, into and then out to the edge of the study into the external and internal iliac branches as far as you can further down. And, and here you can get pretty, you know, the contrast goes all the way. You can it gets a little fainter here on the left side, but you can kind of basically follow the vasculature all the way out to the inguinal regions, to the upper aspect of the of the lower extremities, and just to make sure that there's that nothing is kind of impacting those um, in an acute fashion. All right, so that's kind of um, that, you know, taking a look at that. So basically the aorta throughout all its major branches of so the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. And one of the things that I try, you know, it's, it's important to remember is that depending on the institution, the patient, your, your protocol, and then, then the subsequent contrast bolus delivery, a lot of times contrast will fill the heart and then the... Um, you know, the, uh, the pulmonary vasculature. So it can be useful to look to, for example, look for, uh, you know, the, at the left atrial appendage, it's, it's, it's useful to look, you know, at the pulmonary vasculature, you know, this, you know, may not fill to a greater, you know, to a great extent, but based on the study, you know, this is an excellent study where you can see contrast, uh, or this is, you know, the, you actually see contrast filling the pulmonary vasculature and if there was a more central you know pulmonary embolus you would see it here so it's essential to kind of go through and make sure you look at that as well um, so that basically covers the approach to the vasculature on a CTA study uh, or CTA chest abdomen pelvis for the aorta um, at this point I usually transition into an evaluation of all the non-vascular structures going through you know the airways the lungs you know the various other non-vascular um, thoracic structures and then you know the you know, making sure that I ultimately look at like you know the, the lower neck and 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 the supraclavicular fossa various other chest structures and then I go through the you know the chest out and pelvis um, in usual fashion um, you know as I would a usual pan scan and, you know important thing to just recognize um when you're do when you're doing that for these particular studies is that because of the differing phase of contrast you may see enhancement um, that is different than you would on a usual like portal venous or kind of parenchymal phase study so that's something to keep in mind um, and that you know you do have the advantage of a non-contrast phase to compare as as you need so just things to keep in mind as you go through and look through all the non-vascular structures and i'll refer to the other videos that have more more dedicated uh, kind of search patterns for that process okay so just to recap um in in in, in evaluating uh, or in approaching a CTA of the aorta, uh, essentially to look for acute pathology, you want to get a sense as to what's going on with the patient, priors, et cetera, what's the degree of suspicion. And as you go through, we're going to get a sense as to what, what are the limitations of the study. Um, and then you'll go through the non-contrast phase, looking particularly for intramural hematoma, um, you know, looking potentially, you know, whether for the hyperdent crescent or the displaced calcium, you know, intimal calcification. And then we'll go through the contrast enhanced proportion, look, you know, portion, looking at the aorta, looking, um, for, you know, for uh, dissection, for pseudoaneurysms, for other acute pathology, looking at each of the branch vessels, looking for, you know, and as you go through those, looking also adjacent, looking for wall thickening, looking for inflammatory changes, you know, uncommon vasculitic processes, and then following basically all the branches out to the edge of the study, as far out to the small vessels as you can see. Um, and then once you kind of get that done, also making sure that you look at the pulmonary vasculature if it fills the contrast, and then looking at the non-vascular structures in usual fashion.